In this lesson, we'll learn how to create a conceptual mass and work with some 3D controls to generate the form that we desire. All right, welcome back. So now that we have our levels in place and we're familiar with our controls, let's go ahead and jump to a 3D view really quick. And I want to go ahead and orbit around just to this orientation here. I'm going to click on the corner of this box here. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and generate a two-dimensional surface that I will then use a tool to create a 3D form from that will actually create the basic form of our building, essentially our conceptual mass. And then from there, I want to work with a few of the 3D controls, the drag controls and 3D controls, to really get the form I desire. So let's go ahead and get that knocked out. So to get that done, let's go ahead and get out of the Architecture tab, and let's go ahead and work in the Massing in Sight tab. So go ahead and click on that with me. And what we can do next is actually go to our Conceptual Mass panel here. We're going to focus only on this area for now. And we're going to do an In-Place Mass. And when I hover over this, Revit does a nice job of telling me kind of what this does and even gives me uh, a little bit of detail in the graphic and shows me what it does. So basically this in-place mass is going to help me create a mass that's unique to this project. And as you can tell by the form in this graphic, that is definitely a unique form and looks like it's been created on the spot. So we're going to do a much simpler example. Um, just, those are much easier to learn from, but you have that option to get as funky as you want to when it comes to making your forms. And I'll show you how we can actually get a go about doing that. So let's go ahead and click on in place mass. So when you do that, you'll get this window that appears and don't be startled or anything. It's just Revit letting us know that, hey, Revit has enabled the show mass mode so that as we're, you know, working on this newly created mass, you can actually see it. You can see through it, but it's there. And we can actually touch it and manipulate it. So I like that since I'm working with a mass that if you did, couldn't see it, it defeats the purpose of the mass. So I'm going to go ahead and close it, and I accept it. And what I want to do is go ahead and add a name to this mass. So for this one, we're going to call this one Design School. And once I have the title in place, we can click OK. And now we have a name for our mass. So keep in mind here, I'm in my 3D view, so everything I draw is going to be kind of at a perspective. So let's just do this in floor plan view for now, and we'll kind of work with the 3D view momentarily. So I'm going to kind of scroll in to where my elevation guys are kind of to their extremes almost. So we're going to go here to our draw panel. And I'm going to go ahead and select my line tool to get this accomplished. So the dimensions I'm looking for for the footprint of my building are going to be 100 feet by 60 feet. Simple rectangular form for now that will later on tweak and change uh, with our 3D controls and tools. But for now, now that I have my line activated, I'm going to go ahead and select a start point. So we can click anywhere. And we can then use our mouse to kind of navigate where we want to go and draw this line out. And you'll notice that it snaps orthogonally in 90 degree increments here, which is super helpful, uh, especially when you're trying to work with precision. So we're going to go in a 90 degree angle in this direction, 100 feet. So simply type in your distance. So I'm going to say 100 feet, enter. Easy as that. So now if I wanted to come across and just shoot this way over here to the right, I'm just going to do the same thing. I want to go in this direction. 60 feet. Easy as that when I'm drawing in my distances. And I'm going to come back down. And I'm even going to snap and I'm going to align with that endpoint. I really don't even have to type in a value at this point. I can just finish off the rest of this with my snaps. Now we can go to this 3D view and I'm going to scroll out just a little bit and I can select this two dimensional surface we created. And once I hit this, come over to your form area in here and just click on form. You can actually create a 3D solid form. And you'll notice a couple of things with our form. So I hover over this and I can select my line or my edge essentially. I can over, actually come over to this corner and I can select points. And when I select those, I get this 3D control. Now what it is is these arrows allow me to pick and control and how I want to move this along whatever axis. So we have the blue axis, the red axis, and the green axis. And it's really just a matter of left clicking on the arrow dragging to whatever position you want and then letting go and then you have your form in place now me I'm going with a more orthogonal style so I can always kind of go back if I did a command and I really didn't like what I did you can type in control Z and that will actually undo that and you'll notice me doing that from time to time throughout the course if I'm doing something I'll let you know whenever I'm control Z -ing. that way you don't worry about what's happening with my model or any uh, weird behaviors that might cause confusion but those 3D controls are really going to come in handy, and you'll see how that's going to work once we start manipulating our surfaces. 
but I do want to go ahead and set this height to the proper height. So if I want to go ahead and finish this off, I can actually select any one of these uh, lines and highlight it. And if I tap on tab, I can go from edge to, to line to surface. Basically anything associated with this particular edge. So this the whole uh, mass, this face on the uh, west side there, the top face, are all going to be highlighted because they're all associated with that edge. So I can actually toggle through whatever edge or surface I want to work on. So I'm going to go ahead and select the top. And when I do so, selecting that surface is going to give me the distance from that surface to the ground. And so all I need to do is come into this temporary dimension, click it once, type in the distance I need. In our case, it's 40 feet. Hit enter, and we can make that change really quick. Easy as that. So we'll kind of finish off this simple form for now, and I'll show you how we can continue to work with 3D controls to really manipulate this. But for now, let's go ahead and finish this off. So let's say this was our stopping point, which it's not. But if you wanted to go ahead and finish off the mask that we're working with, a lot of the controls and things we'll be doing in Revit will uh, prompt us to actually hit this green check mark if we're happy and we want to finish whatever we're trying to create. Or if we wanted to stop and cancel anything we're working on in the middle of it, we can hit the red X. So for now, I'm pretty happy with where we're at. Again, in the next lesson, we'll work more with uh, manipulating faces and playing around with some more of those drag controls. But for now, let's go ahead and hit that green check mark. And now this actually creates one solid mass there. Easy as that. So we just created our first simple mass and played around a little bit with some 3D controls. So in the next lesson, I'll show you how we can manipulate faces and continue to use those 3D controls to get the forms we desire. So I'll meet you there.